Okay, in this experiment we're going to look at G. We're going to try, try, try and find G by freefall. And of course we all know that G should be 9.81 meters per second squared. It's the acceleration due to gravity. But how are we going to sort that out? Well, we're going to take an object, something which doesn't really uh, have much air resistance, or air resistance doesn't affect it too much, by a ball bearing, and we're going to drop it at various heights. And we have a light gate at the bottom that's going to measure the velocity. Sorry, it's going to measure the time period. We could do this one of two ways, but we're going to measure the time period, the time it takes to drop. And then we're going to use that um, information in one of the kinematic equations, this one. S equals ut plus a half a t squared. Of course, you know that the initial velocity is zero. It's going to be suspended stationary, so you can get rid of that aspect. Of course, the distance turns to h. So that equals a half g t squared. So if we measure h and make that our control variable, and then we find t and measure that, which is our dependent variable, sorry, h is our independent variable, we're going to then measure our time, which is our dependent variable, and then come up with, hopefully, a graph. Let me just rewrite that slightly to do 2h over g equals t squared, or indeed <clears throat> 2 over g times h. So therefore y equals mx plus c plus 0. If I plot t squared as my y, h is my x, my gradient should be 2 over g. So we'll be plotting t squared and second squared against h in meters, straight line where the gradient should equal 2 over g. Good, so what are we going to have as a table of results? We're going to have the height in meters. We're going to look for the time of drop once, twice, three times an average, and then time squared in seconds squared. And that will be our table of results. This pen is running out, so apologies if it's getting dimmer as we go. That's our table of results. Let me show you the equipment we're using. <clears throat> we're going to use <clears throat> this electronic timer. And what it does is that I have a ball suspended underneath here. There is the ball. And when I turn off the switch, the ball will drop. As it leaves this point, it's going to start timing. And as it goes through the light gate, it will stop timing. So simply, not quite ideal, that one. Hold on. We should try it again. Reset. There we go. 209 milliseconds. If that's as milliseconds it took to drop that height. And of course, I'm going to control the height <coughs> by finding the distance between the center of the light gate and the bottom of the ball. I suppose it's quite an important point there, the bottom of the ball. If I take this out and show you how it's suspended. What we have is the ball is suspended like that. So you need to go from the bottom. If you went to the box here, then you'd have this systematic error each time. And that would probably mean the graph wouldn't go through zero, zero. So a nice range of heights, a range of time. And let me show you what we come up with as an answer. So my results are there. height, time of drop, time squared, and hopefully from those results you should be able to take a gradient, so if you hit pause you can copy those down, or they're in the link below, and hopefully your gradient should be 2g. If, however, it were going to go through like that, and there was this systematic error that would usually imply that the height you're measuring 
between ball and base, you're probably not taking into account that systematic error if it doesn't go through zero. Okay, hope that makes sense.